All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk Los Angeles Lakers rumors about some possible buyout candidates in Hassan Whiteside and Wayne Ellington. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that sub button. I do do this every single day. I know you guys would enjoy the content, so let's just get right into it. I'm curious if Lakers fans want either of these two players because I know that they're a lot of Lakers fans seem to want Otto Porter Jr. as that main dude, but we'll see what happens with Otto. Hassan Whiteside, Wayne Ellington, before I get into this, they have not been bought out, so this is all speculation, but let's just start off the video by talking about Wayne Ellington. He is a little on the older side, which most buyout market candidates are. This is great for the Los Angeles Lakers because you want old veteran guys. You want guys who you know are going to come in here, buy, buy into the system and not mess around with the culture. The culture is going to love them. It's all going to work. And Wayne Ellington's one of those dudes. He's actually even been on the Lakers before. His stats aren't that glaring. So, you know, it's not like this dude's going to be going off or anything on the season averaging Ten and a half points per game, just under two rebounds per game, an assist and a half, and that's about it. He is shooting about eight threes per game, and he is making them at a forty-two percent clip. This is fantastic because he's on the Detroit Pistons, and no disrespect to the Detroit Pistons, but they aren't the best team, and they don't really have playmakers. They don't really have great guys who can make easy easy, easy open opportunities like LeBron James, like Anthony Davis can because they have, they take off that pressure. So Wayne Ellington, I know he would come into this Lakers squad, shoot about six, eight threes a game, however many minutes he's getting, maybe even not six, maybe we're even talking four to eight threes per game. If he's making them at a 40% clip and he's making just two threes per game, that is absolutely huge. The Lakers don't have Danny Green. KCP is ice cold. He's been ice cold for a while now. They don't have that reliable three-point shooter that a lot of championship teams have had in the past. So Wayne Ellington, Kyle Korver, those are two names floating around in the three-point world. Defense-wise, he is going to be a liability, but I don't think Wayne Ellington's going to be playing that much. I would have to say my best guess would be 20 minutes max every night. That's what I would say. That's that's where I see his max being. I don't think defensively it's going to be that big of a liability. They just picked up Andre Drummond. They're already the number one rated defense in the NBA. I don't necessarily see a reason why Wayne Ellington would be kind of like a big no thank you just because of his defense. I know there are good defending guards out there that could be on the market like Avery Bradley. But when you look at the buyout market right now, I mean, Austin Rivers, but he just got, he, he's gone now. So defensively, you're really only looking at Avery Bradley as like a not 3 and D type guy, but defending guard who can handle the ball is really only Avery Bradley. So I don't think defense is going to be something that the the Lakers go for their last roster spot. They're also just middle of the pack three-point shooting. So that's why I think Wayne Ellington would really help them out. And then, like I said, man, he's been on Detroit for this season. And he's making these threes. He's draining on 42%. That is so good. So I would love to have Wayne Ellington because I know LeBron James, Schroeder, AD, they can help create wide-open shots for Wayne because... All the pressure is going to be on those guys. And Andre Drummond just adds into the mix. So I really like Wayne Ellington. I've been a heavy advocator of this move. The Pistons asked for a second round pick at the trade deadline in return. And nobody took the bait. Not a single person tried to trade for Wayne Ellington. It appears no teams had any interest. So Wayne Ellington, hopefully he gets bought out by this Pistons team because First off, you have a bunch of point guards who are about to be healthy, or maybe not a bunch, but you have a bunch of guards who are about to be healthy that have been injured. So this frees up space, and you've got a rebuilding team. They're rebuilding. There's no room for a 33-year-old sharpshooter. I mean, I guess there is, but there's better options out there, in my opinion, for the Pistons. So I really think Wayne Ellington could get bought out. 
we'll keep an eye on it though. Lastly, we'll talk about Hassan Whiteside. I've talked about him. I think I've made a whole video about him going to the Lakers. I'm not that big of a fan of this move just because, I mean, he's got major issues. Like his defense can be good, but it appears Hassan Whiteside's major issue in just his whole NBA career has been effort. It literally is effort and trying. I mean, he got paid in Miami after averaging 3.7 blocks per game and then kind of fell off, went to Portland last year, averaged about 30 minutes per game, put up great stats, 15.5 points per game, 13.5 rebounds per game, threw in three blocks. So when he's trying, this dude is lethal, but defensively, He's never really been good at all on the defensive end. And, and when you have effort issues, that's going to just lead to even more defensive lapses. So I don't know if the Lakers really want Hassan Whiteside. I do think they could use another big. I don't think that they should focus on solely getting a big because first off, Hassan Whiteside is really one of the only bigs left. I think they should go for a three-point shooter or even like a 3 and D uh, wing type guy. But Hassan Whiteside, I can see the logic because first off, you've got question marks around Anthony Davis. He's had injury issues in his career. So there's always a little bit of a, of a hesitation with Anthony Davis long term there. Hopefully he should be good. He should be good. But you, you always want to worry about worst case scenario. You've got Trez. Trez is a little small. He's defensively not great. But Marcus Gasol. Marcus Gasol isn't really great at all, actually, to be honest with you. So another adding on another big man, only averaging eight points, six rebounds, but he is getting a block and a half in just 15 minutes per game this season. So I think the I honestly think the Lakers couldn't go wrong with their last pick, with their last free agent signing. I think any of these guys would really help out the squad. Otto Porter, Avery Bradley. Both of these two dudes, even like Kyle Korver, there's all of these dudes, all these veterans they are going to come in here. They're going to buy into the system. They're going to work with the system well. A lot of these guys have been on the Lakers before, and I don't have any panic heading into the playoffs if they're healthy. If the Lakers are healthy, I just have no panic at all for them. I love the Nets. I love that big three. I love Kevin Durant. I love Kyrie. I love James Harden. But a healthy LeBron James, a healthy Anthony Davis, and a healthy Andre Drummond is really just a recipe for disaster to, to all 29 other teams. So let me know what you guys think about these two uh, possible additions to the Lakers squad. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. I'll see you guys later.